Our text this morning is 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 7. It says, love is patient, love is kind and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant, does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own, is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Today's Valentine's Day. I don't know if I should ask this question or not, but I'm going to. How many of you received a Valentine from someone today or this week? Or Okay, quite a number of you. Uh, when I originally realized that we were going to be meeting and gathering together on Valentine's Day, I thought, I want to preach a Valentine's Day message with the history of Valentine's Day and how it came to be and all of this. And when I went studying and looking for it, it's a little convoluted out there and a little complicated because nobody really quite knows how we got where we are with it. Um, they're not even sure which Valentine is the actual saint that this is named after and how it all became. So I elected not to go in that direction. And, and uh, But out of all of that research, I did want to... I did want to bring Webster into this because I always like looking at Webster and how he defines what, what, what some of these things are. And Webster defines Valentine as a gift or greeting sent or given especially to a sweetheart on Valentine's Day, especially a greeting card sent on this day. But there's a second, there's a second definition, something expressing un critical praise or affection, a gift or greeting sent to someone special. And I want to tell you this morning that God has sent us a valentine. It's a message of the love that he has for all mankind. From the very beginning, God has expressed and shown the great love that he has for man. God expressed his love in creation he prepared the earth for man before he created him. God expressed his love when he saved Noah's family from the flood. He preserved a seed so that man could replenish the earth. God expressed his love when he sent Jesus to become a human. Love caused God to become man. God expressed his love in the life of Jesus on earth. Acts 10.38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. God expressed his love in the death of Jesus. John 15.13 says, Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. And God expressed his love in the resurrection of Jesus. John 14, 19, Jesus says, because I live, you will live also. Today we're looking at, we're going to take a really good look at God's Valentine. But before we do that, I want to begin by telling you a story. It's a true story that takes us back to 1884. James and his friend Jack were the best of friends. So when Jim lost both his legs in a railroad accident, Jack did everything he could to help. At first, Jim was certain his career with the railroad was finished. Then the company gave him a different job. He was given the position of signalman. His outpost was to be a lonely little stop more than 200 miles from anywhere. Jack went along to be whatever help he could Jim had barely recovered from the trauma of a double amputation when the railroad gave him this new assignment. He would live in a little wooden shack about 150 yards from the signal tower. It was going to be lonely out there and there would be many difficult adjustments. But Jack would help for a while anyway, long enough for Jim to overcome those initial adjustments. I'm gonna come back to that story. In fact, I kind of broke it up throughout my message. 
Um, but we'll get back to it a little bit later. When you think about God's Valentine to us, I imagine many of you thought and, and believed that that Valentine that God gave us is Jesus, and you're correct. That, that is the ultimate Valentine that God gives. But he gave us more in his word as well. Like all Valentines, we have expressions of God's love throughout his word. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 5.8 says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Ephesians 2, 4, and 5 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. God loved us so much, even though we were spiritually dead and doomed by our sins, he gave us back our lives when, we, when he raised Jesus from the dead. Only by his undeserved favor have we been saved. 2 Thessalonians 2, 16 and 17 says, Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. 1 John 4, 9 and 10 says, In this the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. And finally, in Revelation 1, 5, it declares, And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Let there be no doubt. God loves us and he has expressed his love through his word. Now let's go back and look at Jim and Jack for a few moments. In the beginning, Jack stuck around mostly for company. He swept out the shack, and he pumped the water from the well, and he tended the garden, all things that Jim could not do. There was a little, little trolley, a single cedar that led from the shack to the signal tower. Jack pushed Jim on that trolley several times a day and stood there while Jim operated the big levers in sequence. Eventually, Jack got so familiar with Jim's routine that he began to walk out and operate the signal system himself. Sure enough, pretty soon, in addition to house cleaning and the rest, Jack gradually, Jack gradually began to take over all the duties for the railroad, though officially he was not an employee. There was a lot to remember on that job, a lot to be done. Daily responsibilities at the signal tower included working the levers as well as the tower controls that opened and closed siding switches. But Jack never complained. After all, Jim was his friend. It was the least that Jack could do. Again, we'll get back to the finish of that in just a few moments. So God has sent us a valentine. And like, kind of like, it, it likened me back a little bit to when I was a kid in school, uh, when we were required you know, in our classrooms that everybody got a Valentine. So we, I remember all through school, at least up until high school, that we had to do Valentine's for everybody on Valentine's Day if we were in school and even if we weren't on Valentine's Day. And just like that, God expects us, the church, to be carriers of his Valentine to the world. God's Valentine's a little different. It's not only for us. Most Valentines, you write them out to the, to the person, to that particular person, and you leave them there. And it's designed just for that. God's Valentine is for everyone. God gives his Valentine to us that we might share it with the rest of the world. 
1 John 4.11 says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. We're to send a message of love to the world. What is it that he expects us to carry? Again, our text says, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So our Valentine message to the world must be a message of patience. We live in a world of impatience. And a very impatient world has had to sit and deal with a pandemic for 10 months and is driving us all crazy. We are impatient, though. Think about it. I'm going to list just a few things that we often find ourselves impatient with. We're impatient with waitresses, with store clerks, with family members, and if you're like me, even ourselves. We need to be patient. 1 Thessalonians 5.14 says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. Hebrews 10.36 says, For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. And then a couple of passages from James. In 1.4 he says, But let the patience have her perfect work, that you might be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And James 5, 7 says, Be patient, therefore, brothers, to the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waits for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he receives the early and the latter rain. And I've admitted over the years as being your pastor that patience is not something I have a lot of at times. It's one of my weaknesses. But God expects you and me to be patient with one another. God's a patient God. He suffers long with people. Jesus is a patient Savior. He was patient with his apostles. He's patient with you and I. The Holy Spirit is going to help us to be patient with all men. Remember, patience suffers long. It bears all things. It endures, and it never retaliates. So our message needs to be a message of patience. Our Valentine message also needs to be a message of kindness. This is love in action. When our Valentine message is a message of kindness, it's love in action. Romans 12, 10 says, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another. Ephesians 4.32 says, And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ forgave you. The Bible tells us Joseph was kind to his brothers. The good Samaritan was kind to the wounded Jew Jewish man. So the tough question we have to ask ourselves when we're looking in the mirror is, do people see us being kind to others? And what did Jesus say about all of that? In Matthew 25, verses 34 to 40, he says, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come in to you? And the king will answer unto they say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of my brothers, you did it to me. Patience, kindness. Our Valentine message also must be a message of unselfishness and generosity. 
The Living Bible translates verse 5 of our text this morning like this. Love does not demand its own way. It's not irritable or touchy. It doesn't hold grudges and will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. Wow. That's pretty convicting, isn't it? We don't always see that in Christian people, but we should. Jesus said in Matthew 22, 39, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, 33, just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. I wonder, how many people's souls are not in the kingdom today? In part, because some Christian acted selfishly around them or to them. See, God's calling us to be unselfish and to be generous. Our message also needs to be a message of righteousness. This is love in our conduct. It's how we live our lives. Luke 1, verse 74 and 75 says that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. Philippians 1.11 says, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. That word righteousness, I've used it a couple of times recently. It means to do what's right to God and man. Our text today says love believes all things. That means we're always ready to believe the best about others. Love endures all things, hardships, trials, pandemics. They don't stop us from loving others. Love bears all things. Love does not discuss other people's sins. That word bears means to cover. And in Proverbs 10, 12, it says, hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sins. And finally, our Valentine message to the world must be a message of sincerity. That's love and profession. Romans 12, 9 says, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Let love be without dissimulation. The Living Bible puts it this way. Don't just pretend that you love others. Really love them. That's pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. I like that translation. I like the, the translation, that Living Bible translation of 1 John 3, 18 and 19 as well. It says, little children, let us stop just saying we love people. Let us really love them and show it by our actions. Then we will know for sure by our actions that we are God's, that we are on God's side. And our consciences will be clear even when we stand before the Lord. So God's given us a valentine. And he wants us to take that valentine and give it to the world. Oh yeah, the story. Let's see how that ends. For more than nine years, Jack kept house for Jim. For more than nine years, he made the daily trip to the tower to operate the heavy equipment until one day when he died of tuberculosis. In all those years, Jack never made a mistake. He never threw a switch incorrectly. He never sighted a car in air. Not one accident or even a narrow miss was reported on that line. Jack came down with tuberculosis and died six months later. He's buried in Cape Colony, South Africa, not far from the outpost where he worked for almost a decade for his love for a friend. His grave is a silent testimony of selflessness. Oh, by the way, I don't think I mentioned that Jack, Jim White's devoted friend who cleaned house, pumped water, tended the garden, and manned the switch tower, was not a man at all. He was a baboon. 
Now, if an ape can demonstrate that kind of love, can't we who call ourselves Christians be known for our love more than anything else? God so loved us that Jesus came down and died for each one of us. We need to strive to be an example of that same love to a lost and a dying world. Jesus says in John 15, 12, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. All who love Jesus should show it. His love for us should direct us to love each other. So we've received a valentine from God. And as we leave here today, we go with the knowledge that God wants us to be his valentine to the world. May the Lord help us each one of us to spread his message of love around the world until he comes. God's valentine. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for loving us so completely. Father, I thank you that you kept sharing text after text and scripture after scripture as I put this together, Lord. And I know that there are still many more scriptures in your word that talk about how much you love us. An unconditional love, Lord, that regardless of how we live and act, you still love us. And Father, that Valentine message that you've given to us, you want us to take to a world around us, a world that's impatient, a world in darkness. Give us the strength to do that, Lord. Give us the boldness. May we be your Valentine, not just for today, not just on February 14th every year, but day in and day out, Lord. May we draw from you the strength and the courage that we need. And may you give to us the words, the expressions. Help us to live righteous and holy, Lord, with unconditional love in our hearts, that we might truly be your reflections here on this earth. In Jesus' name we pray these things.